Hi, and welcome to another scrapbooking process video. Today, I'm going to share with you the process for creating this layout. And this one was used using another color tool. The last video that I made, I used the Coolers app, but for this one, I used uh, Sarah Renee Clark's color palettes to choose this color palette here, which is number 120. I used color palette number 120, which comes from color catalog number one. I do have the color cubes as well as using the uh, PDFs that she offers as well. So if you would like to see how this layout came together, just keep watching. So I'm starting with my phone here and I'm going to access the color catalog. I'm starting with volume one. It's an interactive PDF. And so once you access it, you can search by, you can browse by keywords. And I wasn't using it quite, I've learned a little bit more about how to navigate it since I used it on this particular day. And I think I'll do a video where I just show exactly how to use this app in a little bit more detail. So uh, for the purposes of this video, I'll just uh, show you what I'm showing you. <laughs> um, I'm basically looking through the keywords and I found this one and what I did was this one meaning that particular color combination and now I'm looking at sky blue as an option because this, the, the sky is pretty blue there so I thought I would use that as a jumping off point. I don't know exactly which photo I'm going to scrapbook here so I'm looking at a couple of different combos and anything that might jump out at me. Ooh, look at this one. My patrons especially loved this color palette and it's very different for me. It's not something I would typically use so it really appealed to me as well. I'm going to keep looking though just to see if there might be something else. Ooh, I love like that and I feel like especially if I covered up and didn't take the green that that might work really well for that more colorful of the photos there so I have three options for color palettes as you saw I just kind of took screen captures of them and that just allows me to reference their numbers so I'm actually going to pull out all of them so the first one was 120 the other one was 293 and the last one was 185. So I have these all as my options and I feel like that one, well that one would go with either of those two, but these these two photos look especially good. Like I feel like some of these would work with multiple photos, but what I'm gonna go with is, I really wanna scrapbook that photo of Scott and I there's on the back side of these are tints and shades as well. And I feel like this photo, because it's a nighttime photo, might look nice with that color palette with the shades. And then that one, bright and colorful one with the oranges, would look good with that one. But these two photos here, I think, would look particularly good with this color palette. So I'm going to go with color palette number 120. And I'm going to scrapbook this photo, which is the one that I really wanted to scrapbook today. I also really want to scrapbook that one. And I feel like that would look really good with that bunch of papers as well. So I'm going to hang on to these color palettes and use them on these photos. And I'm going to, for today, just draw from this 120 color palette, which is a, an assortment of pinks, one really dark brown, and then one blue as well. And what I'm thinking is that I can do one paper draw, which means just kind of like drawing from my scraps of my papers. And that might be enough paper to actually do both of these photos. Although today I'm only gonna be scrapbooking this one. But I'll keep my scraps as a separate little kit and I will uh, scrapbook that second photo with the same papers. So I'm going through my pink scraps here. And in my last layout, which was called Farewell, I showed how I store my scraps in these giant Ziploc bags and I sort them by color. I've been storing them in a similar way to this, sometimes in a drawer and sometimes in these bags since all the way back in 2009. And so I'm just picking out any papers here that have any of these shades of pink. I really love that rich raspberry color and that polka dot paper, which is by Stampin' Up, really works with that. Also, I find that that glitter paper 
with the hearts on it is a really good color for picking up on Scott's t-shirt. This is early espresso from Stampin' Up. I took a eight and a half by 11 sheet from my stash. And now I'm going to try to find some blues. And as I mentioned in my last video, it, I find it hard to find actual real true blues. I need to focus on getting more pattern papers that are actual blue because I just have turquoises and teals and mint greens and stuff. Even in my blue scraps, a, a lot of them are greens. <laughs> once you once you really look at them beside blues, they look quite green. So I'm pretty desperate here, so I'm just basically pulling out anything I have that's blue. It'll have to do, right? So I'll put all those scrap bags back and I just like to get a sense of how all these colors look together and look at them. I'm going to not use that pattern, that really loud pattern that I just took off of the, the papers. And I'm actually taking a photo of all of these papers together because I just like how it looks. So scrapping from your stash can be very overwhelming and that's part of the reason why I'm using these color tools, the Cooler app last time and now this color catalog by Sarah Renee Clark this time because it just helps you to reduce the options. It's what makes scrapping from your stash a little bit trickier than scrapping from a kit or scrapping from a collection is that when you have a collection or a kit, you've got a, a set amount of supplies out to choose from. And then you just go into your stash if you really need to, if you can't find what you need from that. But when you're scrapping from your stash, if you've been scrapping for a while, you probably have lots and lots and lots of things that you're picking from. And so it can be overwhelming and it can be really difficult to find the things that you need when anything can work, right? <laughs> so I think using a color palette as a jumping off point or a mood board or something like that is a really nice way to reduce the overwhelm and to just give you a jumping off point to say, okay, I wanna use these papers. And then it's just a matter of figuring out, well, how am I gonna chunk these papers together in a way that's gonna make a nice layout? So that's sort of what I'm doing here. I started with a larger selection of scraps and now I've, I've really narrowed it down to these specific scraps. I decided to use a, a craft as my background, craft paper as my background. But I'm running out of craft paper, believe it or not. I have plenty of eight and a half by 11 craft paper, but I don't have much 12 by 12. This is all of my neutral 12 by 12 cardstock. And so as you can see, some of these are partial pieces and I don't have, I, I think that that first piece of craft paper, the lighter one is just too light. I, I need something a little bit more substantial. The reason I'm picking craft here is that it picks up on, it, it has a real sand look to it. And this is a beach photo, even though there's no sand in the photo at all, it's all water. I just really like how it looks. This is my favorite piece of craft paper. It's from Basil and it's just Basil Basics Craft is all that it's called. And I want to use it, but look, see, it's got these two chunks out of it. So I shouldn't have cut it because I could have used the other side. It, I'm trying to get as much length out of it as I possibly can. And then I went and cut a strip off of it, which is silly. But anyhow, we'll, we'll, we'll do what we can here. What I'm thinking is that if I put strips of pattern paper at the top and at the bottom, I might be able to actually get a decent layout out of what I have here. So I'm going to use that lighter piece of craft paper as my base to hold the 12 by 12 shape and size. And then I'll layer these other papers in a way that the nicer piece of craft paper that I like better, that's the darker one, is showing more. So that really, that's all that you're going to see. And I think that this is how I'm probably going to layer all of these now that I double matted my photo. So I did mat it in white and then I also matted it in that early espresso paper or cardstock from Stampin' Up that I had pulled out of my stash. Now I'm matting everything, I'm mounting everything, just gonna do a quick 
adhesive change, mounting everything on this piece of lighter craft cardstock, which is really just holding the space. I'll cut off this awkward piece so that it's just not getting in the way as much. And then this top strip of patterned paper, this is just from an old kit. It's um, Studio Tecturic, which must have come in probably a hip kit or a scraptastic kit way back in the day. I like that pattern though. Uh, so I put that at the top and that at the bottom and then I trimmed it off so that now it's back to 12 by 12. And this paper is not the shape that I need it to be so I'm going to do a little bit of patchwork here to put it to overlap it with itself so that I'm extending it and making it be a little bit bigger than it is. And in order to do that, I'm just lining up the pattern with my eyeballs. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here and then trimming it down because I don't need to waste all that extra pattern paper there. It's a really pretty pattern. So I only needed a little sliver of it to overlap with itself to make it a little bit longer. I'm going to use this die. It's one of my favorite dies. It's from um, MFT and it's just a large tab die and I'm using it with my cuddle kid which is a tiny little die cut machine that I've had for ages and ages it used to be it was marketed towards kids this was back in the day before nowadays all the die manufacturers make their own small versions of their die cut machines but this was before that the only small version was the cuddle kid back then and uh, I had two of them, actually, because I bought them on sale at Michael's. They were $4 on clearance. <laughs> so I bought one for each of my kids because it was a bit of a splurge. But they were so cheap, I thought, well, then they can both scrap at the same time. Since then, I've given my extra one away to a friend. Uh, so there, I'm just uh, outlining it with my brown Zig Writer pen. I like these Zig Writer pens and uh, they're, I've had them since 2009 when I started scrapbooking and uh, they are starting to run out so I'm going to have to get new ones. Do, do they still make those? Let me know in the comments if they still make Zig Writers with the dual tip. One is a bullet point and then the other is a fine liner point. I had one in black, one in gray, and one in brown but my gray was too light of a gray. I didn't actually care for the gray one. So I, I still have it because I haven't really used it very much. But the black one is long run out. So as you can see, I'm just chunking down these papers. I just use my ruler to tear them, to tear a straight edge, because I can't be bothered with cutting. It's uh, It gives me this nice, interesting, torn edge. And I don't care if the edges are torn on some sides and not on others. I'm not really too concerned with symmetry and that sort of thing most of the time. My initial thought here is that I would make it look like that piece of pink paper with the with the chevrons cut out of it. My initial thought was that I would make that look like one long strip going behind all the layers, but I'm going to end up, it's too distracting at the top, so I'm going to end up not doing that. But that was my initial idea right there. And that chevron that's cut out of that paper was, it's just a punch that I have. It's a Stampin' Up! punch. I think you're going to see it a little bit later when I go to get to the embellishing section of this video. Uh, but it was, it, it must have been something that I cut out and used the, used the actual chevrons and left the negative space in my scraps. And now I'm just going to use it as a design element. This glitter paper must have come in a kit because I don't typically buy glitter paper, but it's really, really nice. I love how it picks up on the pinkish purpley color in Scott's shirt. I'm going to put one of these little tab die cuts in the bottom corner here and one amongst my layers. I'm just going to trim a little bit of that. There was just a little bit too much of it there. So that's looking a little bit better. I am going to outline this with my brown marker. I find that brown and blue are not two colors that I typically combine. So they 
they kind of have a feeling like they almost clash with each other. So I'm trying to make them look a little bit more harmonious together by bringing some of the brown into some of the blues and and into some of the layers. Brown and pink look amazing together. They look great. It's the blue that I'm really trying to incorporate. So outlining the tab that's blue will help. And there's a couple of other things that I'll do every here and there just to bring brown and blue together in a few little tiny ways. I'll trim off those little edges that hang that overhang the edge. And I just keep that little color palette card close by so that I can keep that color scheme in mind as I'm choosing things. I just love working with color palettes so much that I'm just taking pictures because I'm enjoying it. So now it's actually the next day and uh, I wrote down a few ideas of some things that I wanted to make sure I did. One of those was I felt the need to incorporate a little bit more of that dark, dark brown color into my color scheme because right now it's only in the form of outlining lines and that very thin matting that goes around the outside edge of my double matted photo. So I grabbed a couple of punch options, border punch options, because it's a really nice way to add a solid and a bold statement to a page. And I've decided, I grabbed a couple of them, a couple of different sizes and, and styles of scallops. So this is the double embossed dotted lace punch. And uh, I like this one because it's a big giant scallop, but see how it competes with those large polka dots? It's too similar to the large polka dots. So I'm going to use the, the more small scallop punch. I think this is just called scallops and it's by Stampin' Up. And I'll put those on each side of this spread. And now this spread is looking kind of symmetrical. Like I, I just kind of feel like it's a little predictable and I don't know. But once I add all of the embellishments, it'll look a little bit less structured and more free flowing, which is what I'm wanting it to look like. I'm going to add a little, a couple staples there to hold that third scallop in place. Just introducing a little bit of that espresso, early espresso cardstock to the bottom little cluster because I think there's going to be a secondary cluster down there. And then I'll just glue those other two scallops so that they're tucked into the layers. And it looks almost like it could be a continuation, like it's one long strip of brown paper across the back, uh, right in front of the denim pattern paper. Although the scallops aren't the same, like they don't line up. So it's, you know, if you look closely enough, you'll know that it's not one continuation, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to cut out a heart embellishment. I'm just lining up the pattern of hearts so that, I don't know, I just thought it looked cute like that, even though I don't normally like things to be too symmetrical. I liked, I liked how that pattern looked when it was lining up symmetrically. So I did that. I'm outlining this heart with that same brown marker pen from Zig. And I'm just showing the others to my patrons here. Not every layout I do is a live stream with my patrons, but um, once a month I do a layout or two. And this, this month I did two. So that's going to be sort of my main large embellishment on the page is, is this heart. And I just changed my angle here so that you could see how I store my die cut pieces. I've been storing my die cut pieces in these little cases that can hold four by six photos for a couple of years now. I really like storing them this way, but one challenge is that I don't use them all that often, but I think I just, I don't use my stash as often as I really should. So I've been storing them in these baskets and then these baskets go into a little white cabinet thing. That's basically two shelves that these slide onto. And uh, so I, I just wanted to show you how I have that kind of beside me as I'm scrapping. I'm again referring to that color palette as I pull out some die cut pieces that might coordinate with this set. 
This particular case is busting full because I have more pink than anything else. And so I do have a piece of washi tape that I used to keep it closed and it was sticking to some things that it shouldn't stick to. So I just moved it out of the way there. And I'm just pulling out anything that has these shades of pink or that might match thematically with the ideas I have for this page. So I pulled out a couple and then I closed that up and there's a little comment from one of my patrons. That paint chip piece was perfect as far as color scheme goes, but I didn't want to use another paint chip because I used the color palette on my last layout and I just didn't want to have too much of a repetition from page to page. So I will, I have more selection in blue when it comes to die cuts than I have for, for papers. So I'll be able to get quite a few different blues on the page this way. So there, there we go. Now I also have some, what am I looking at here? These are my chipboard pieces. So chipboard is a little bit, I outlined the swatch in a, in a bold black marker just to indicate that these are chipboard pieces and not die cuts. So I'm just looking through my blue chipboard pieces and I don't think I'm gonna find anything in here. So I'll put those away, but let's have a look at the brown. I keep brown and gold in the same case, but in two different Ziploc bags. I've got lots of different browns here, so I'll pull out some of those. They look really nice with the chipboard or with the with the craft background. And I do like the idea of introducing some craft to the layers so it's not just on the background. I have a chevron there in case I want to repeat the chevron motif. I'm not sure that I want to do that, but I'll keep it out just in case. Yeah, see, I like that idea of repetition, but no, it's too competitive. It's competing with the chevron that's already there. I like this, but it's a little bit too boxy. So I'm going to cut it out to introduce a little bit more of a flowy, organic almost feel to it to, to just follow the cursive lines here. And that balances out because I've got so many rectangles of paper that are repeated in all these layers that I wanted something a little bit more flowy. And this will become part of my title. I don't know that for sure at this point, but, but it eventually does. I'm using Stampin' Up! Dimensional Adhesive, which is my favorite way to pop dot something up off the page. I like how thin they are and I just, I've been using them for years and I'm loyal. I, I really like Stampin' Up! products. And so I always get the, the dimensional adhesive. Oh, see, I really like how that best ever looked layered with that heart, but oh, I really liked the definition that that gave the word adventure, but I didn't like the competing, the way that the word best, the phrase best ever. If that was an image instead of words, that would have worked better there. I cut out the word loved into another circle because again, I'm trying to avoid some boxiness here. I want my, my embellishments to have more curves on them. So I'm picking some circles and that backpack that goes with the idea of adventure. That little flag that says love and love is cursive. So that's flowy, even though the, the shape of the chipboard itself is a little boxy. Then I have this little blue label, which I will cut into. And so you can see these three clusters are evolving. One in the bottom corner here, one down by the word adventure in the left-hand corner, and then one up in the top with the bunny. And that bunny, I, re I really think he's super cute. I don't use a lot of cutesy characters and animals and stuff on my pages, but I love how he says, I love you. And I love how the I love you banner is a deeper color. It's basically a similar hue to Scott's shirt. It's just a deeper color. So I really like that quite a lot. Now, one of the embellishments I picked out is a heart piece of vellum, but it actually has a very subtle pink, um, tone to it like it's it's uh it almost looks like a pink stamp on top of a larger pink uh plain vellum 
heart shape. So I took out some heart punches and I punched a piece of vellum to make some coordinating hearts. But my hearts are clear, but I'm going to fix that. I'm going to make them be colored into in pink the same way that that other one is. So pulling out, just having a second look at some of those pink die cuts again, just to see if there's anything else that I missed that might make a good addition to this page. And so keeping this color palette on hand and using it as I scrap and choose both my embellishments as well as my pattern papers, it's really reinforcing this idea of using your scraps is way, way easier when you have something to structure you, right? So as I was picking those embellishments, I wasn't just picking, hmm, what colors will look good with what I already have. Instead, I was really kind of like keeping myself focused on that color palette and that made selecting potential embellishments way, way easier. So here again, I'm looking for that dark, dark brown and there wasn't any in there. So there was just a, a big owl. And so that was easy for me to just take a few seconds to look through that and say, nope, none of those are gonna work. Instead of, if I wasn't using that color palette, I might be thinking, oh, but what about maybe this other brown will work or something like that, right? So I really like using this palette if you didn't notice, but <laughs> by how much I'm, I'm speaking so highly of it. I just really enjoy it. So let's layer these together in a way that is fun and interesting. So we've got the, I find that that little, it almost looks like a bingo card or a set of stamps or something in the background, that pink one with the, the black lettering on it, that gives me my anchoring for everything else will just kind of sit on top of it in a little cluster of three. And I don't want anything to be too lined up. I want things to be sort of like up and down and up and down, not all kind of like at the same level. So the ears poke up higher than the background piece and then, you know, the loved, the blue loved sticks up a little bit higher than the button embellishment. That button embellishment, by the way, is something a viewer sent me a long time ago. I had a viewer who made a bunch of uh, homemade embellishments just with punches and, and buttons and stuff. And she sent me a whole humongous pack of them and I've been using them for years and years <laughs> and I still have plenty. So again, I'm just, what I'm pointing at there is that I just want this cluster to look interesting and varied. I don't want anything to make any, any lines. I will add a brown line here because again, this is going to bring my brown and blue together. And I thought that this was a peel off. I still think it's a peel off, but I couldn't get it to peel off properly. So I just ended up peeling the whole layer away and then I used adhesive to glue it down. So I thought that I, I want this word adventure to cover up some of that awkward looking layers that you see in the background of these embellishments. So the word adventure will, will cover up some of that. But yeah, so see how that heart has a pink center in it? These hearts don't, they're just plain. I'll get back to the placement of the word adventure in a second. I'm just playing around with some markers that I have to see if I can color in hearts. And that was a Super Tips by Crayola. And then this is a Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker. And the color I'm using is called Pale Pink. It doesn't smear on vellum and it just gives me this really nice subtle pink coloration. I am leaving, I'm not coloring it all the way to the edge. So I'm leaving a little plain vellum edge around it. Kind of like the die cut that I'm copying has. So those will go back to where they were originally. And now you'll notice that that original heart vellum is actually now lighter than the others. I'll go back and fix that at some point. So I'll staple that heart onto that little seal, that blue die cut piece that looks like a seal. And then I think what I'll do is I will staple all of these vellum hearts in place. Stapling is a really good way to deal with vellum because it means that you don't have to worry about whether the glue is gonna show or not. 
This little asterisk, it's a little piece of acetate, the purpley pinky acetate. It's a very, very dark magenta color. It comes from that really bright raspberry color. And what I'm doing here, I wanted to get a little circle punch and then I couldn't find it amongst all of the little dots that were already in my hole puncher, but I found it eventually. <laughs> I had to dump out all of those little punched holes to find it. I just wanted to add a little bit of blue to that. It just looked a little plain the way it was. So I just added a punched blue, blue dot. And now I will glue that to my page using Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive. And for these vellum hearts, I just wanna place it so it's not too lined up with the other embellishments. So I put it over a little bit. And then I'll just staple all of these hearts using, I like my staples to all face the same way. One of my staples is horizontal here because it sort of had to be, but all the rest of them are vertical. And the one that's horizontal is pretty far away from all the vertical ones, so I don't mind it being like that. It's just a matter of personal preference. It's not wrong if you like your, if you like your, your staples to be all random uh, angles and stuff. That looks pretty cool too, but I just like it this way. It's something about the way I am. <laughs> So I'm just placing this so that it covers some of those awkward little layers that we're showing behind and behind those those layered embellishments. It just kind of pulls everything together. What I was finding is that there just wasn't enough definition between that word adventure, which I think is going to be part of my title. So I do want it to stand out a little bit more than it is right now. I thought about outlining it with brown, but to be honest, I think that that would compete a little bit too much with the cursive writing of the word adventure itself. So what I'm doing is I'm basically adding a faux shadow here, emphasizing the shadow that would already be there because this is popped up. So you're going to get a bit of a gray shadow. I'm just using that same clear color marker, clean brush marker from Zig that I already had picked out in pale pink that I used for the vellum but it's showing up darker here because it's not on vellum. So it is uh, gonna soak into the paper a little bit more. And I, I do like how that looks. It was a bit of a risk. I've never done that before as a way of um, adding a little bit of contrast between my layers. I have a bunch of different little tips and tricks I use for that. Uh, this is the first time I've used this particular approach for uh, defining my layers. And I like how it turned out. I'm at the very end of my Tombow Mono multi-adhesive, so it's, uh, it's a little tricky getting that out. And when it does come out, it tends to come out in big blobs, so I'll have to get a new bottle of that. I think I have one in my stash. So I think that this is looking pretty darn good. You're going to see a lot of this kind of final details of adding a little thing here and a little thing there. It's an important part of the process, right? Is just kind of thinking about what else can make this layout feel complete or finished. I've had this little acetate butterfly out for a while, not sure exactly where I would use it, but I think that it does a pretty good job of covering up some of this space on this die cut flag piece here or banner or whatever you call that. It just adds a bit of interest in that little open space there. I use Tombow Aqua adhesive, which is uh, good for gluing paper to paper. But what I like about it is that it is clear from the beginning. So it's a, it's a nice one for using behind acetate. Now here, I'm just adding a layer of that same pale pink to this original die cut vellum that had the pink there but it's as I added pink to the other ones this one wasn't dark enough anymore so I just added it and now they all look, have, look more similar to one another. I still have not attached my main cluster of everything to my background and that's for a reason. So I'm going to add some splatter, but first I'm trying to choose a little phrase to stamp on this little white and blue label at the bottom here. The one that I chose was this was awesome. And I'm going to pull out my early espresso Stampin' Up ink. That's one of the things I love about Stampin' Up is that everything coordinates. So I already used early espresso cardstock on this page and this ink is gonna coordinate perfectly with that. 
and that's that little that little scrap of scalloped brown paper beside it is that exact same color going to outline this now this this uh, process video is a little bit longer than most of my process videos and that's because I'm doing more of these details so um, I've also included more of my selection process. And so this one is a little bit longer. My videos won't typically, this is not a trend or anything, um, but I do appreciate you watching uh, my videos. So thank you for still being here. <laughs> um, as you see, I just added some gouache to a stamping block. And this is my little spray protecting thing that I use. Uh, bear with me because I haven't sorted out exactly how to make this work right so that I can also film. And I, I wasn't sure if you could even see this, but I'm going with it just in hoping that you can see it. And so I'm just adding a little bit of water to that gouache and then I am mixing it up with my fan brush and then I'm just tapping it into those three little places and that was fine as it was but I decided to add just a tiny little bit more so let's just add some here and there and so now that that's done I am ready to stick my layers onto my background so I'm just using my same the the adhesive I've been using all day today that is which is my normal adhesive is Tombow tape runner and I buy that in bulk from Penwa every whenever I run out it turns out to be every couple of years I buy another big box of it and I found that little die cut that little circle one it just adds a little something there because I felt like that little bit of blue scrap that was sticking out there it was just not it looked like it was directing your attention to something, but then nothing was there. So I felt like it just needed something else there. I really wanted to use that thicker twine. I like how it looks, but it just wasn't fitting through the hole. And I didn't want to punch a bigger hole. I didn't want to have to bother with that. So I'm just inking up February and the year, which is 2023. I don't need the date necessarily. Uh, and it won't fit on that little circle tag anyways. And I'm going to take the time to clean my roller date stamp. I don't always clean it, but you know, if you'd go too long without cleaning it, ink builds up in the little metal parts on the edges of it. And it ends up being a lot messier than what you probably want it to be, unless if you're going for a super, super messy look. So it's worth taking a few minutes to clean your roller date stamp every once in a while. If not every time you use it, I'm sure that the manufacturers would say you should really clean it every time you use it. <laughs> I'm just showing you my wood veneer here because I am picking it out and wondering which one I'm going to use. I decided to go with the stars. I keep my wood veneer in a drawer right beside me in an attempt to try to use it more often because as you can tell I've got a pretty big stash of it. I'm just going to take these little stars. These are from Studio Calico and I have several packages of those together in one little bin there and I just basically dropped them in those three little clusters and now I am mostly leaving them where they are but too many ended up landing in this one corner down here so I'll take some of them off. There we go a couple of little switches where I wanted I wanted more small ones so I will adhere these using my Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive. This is super strong adhesive. It's great for using on mini albums and cards and things that are going to be handled. You really do not need too much of this to hold on one of these wood veneers. This is just going in a page protector. It's not even going to be handled. So the tiniest little bit of glue will hold these really, really firmly. Just putting a little bit of extra glue behind that embellishment because it was, it was popping up off the page a little bit. And I really do like how that looks. Oops, there was an extra little one there that I missed. And so I do want this one to be called Adventure With You. So I do need to pick out some letter stickers and put them right there. So let me just go to my RazCog, which holds all of my letter stickers. And my brown ones are all together here. I would love for this to be a nice dark brown. 
and small letter stickers because I don't want these words to compete with the word adventure. So if they're too big, it'll look like the title is just with you and then the word adventure will just get kind of overlooked. So all of these are actually too big. I do like them, but they're all too big. Now these gold ones are okay, but I, I don't really, they're a good size, but I don't really want the letters to be gold. So I, I, those reminded me that I have this other set, which is by Paige Evans. And I thought I would just experiment with, I'm experimenting with the X's because I don't usually use those, coloring it in with a Stampin' Up! alcohol marker, but that was not quite thick enough. And then I tried coloring it in with a Sharpie marker and that actually worked. So it's a very, very fine tip. So it's going to be a longer process than what I'd like it to be, but it it has really good coverage. The Sharpie markers have great coverage. So I'm just playing around here. I'm going to color in this W. I'll zoom in a little bit and I'm going to color in the letters that basically spell out with U. And I am going to cut out some of this. I am a firm believer in showing my entire process, but we're at the 40 minute mark now. So I'm going to cut this out and skip to the end. Okay, so now for the placement. And I will just let you know that if you have these cardstock topped foam stickers at home, uh, there are a bunch of different thicker sets and even non thicker branded letters that are made this way. I will just warn you to be very cautious as you peel them from the page that you don't bend the letter because if you do bend the letter sticker, it will crease and you will see that. So if you like the nice, smooth, shiny surface that that cardstock, that's nice printed cardstock gives that those letter stickers, just be cautious that what I do is I actually bend and peel back the backing so that the sticker remains firm. Just had to add a little bit of brown to one of those letters because it didn't quite cover quite as well. So now this one is adventure with you and I forgot to glue that in place. So I glued that in place and here's how this one looks. There are some photos coming up as well that you'll get to see in a second. And before I share those photos, just a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. These folks help make this channel happen. So big thanks to all of them. Patrons get early ad free access to all of my process videos and real time unedited versions of my videos, as well as a monthly live stream, zoom chats, behind the scenes videos of my room and my process. So thanks to them. And thanks to you also for watching all the way to the end of this slightly longer one. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that this has given you a few more ideas about how to use a color palette no matter how you choose it whether you use the color cubes like I did or the coolers app or even a Pinterest board or whatever using a color scheme to guide your scrapping process really does help streamline the process and get your creative juices flowing so thanks so much for watching and have a really great scrappy week